Right, um, the last video, I think, uh, at least um, in terms of using this book, because I would have thoroughly exhausted my annotations, um, is structure. Um, so key structural points here. So um, firstly, Berling summoning the inspector, the idea that um, when he's giving a speech, a man must look after himself. And he's, you know, a man must look after his business himself and his own. Um, and at that moment, the inspector arrives. It's because Mr. Burling's views are most harmful here, and we need to hear a different perspective. Priestley is saying, OK, quite enough, Mr. Burling. Let me have my say through the inspector. And, um, yeah, that's why Mr. Burling's views are made to seem so nonsensical at the start as well. And this uh, structural point is even commented on right at the end by the other members of the family, that it was strange the inspector arrived at just that moment. It's symbolic. Why the inspector disappears? That essentially is to give the Burlings free will. They need to have time to themselves to think over the message and to take it on board. So just as in A Christmas Carol, how the last ghost, um, the ghost of Christmas yet to come, doesn't say a word. It means that Scrooge has to make his own interpretations and take the lesson on board himself. He's no longer being lectured um, at. The inspector needs to leave. No, he's given his final speech. It's now up to the Burlings, and obviously they don't take on the message, which is why Eva dies for real at the end, the sort of second death idea. Why there are separate photographs, that's a key structural point, and that gives Gerald the idea or the excuse that they may have been different girls, which gives them, well, him and the Burlings, um, a chance to avoid their responsibilities. However, as I've said before, the descriptions of Eva match up throughout the play, and so do the chronological details. So it's just a practice of self-deception de self on the whole here. Um, Gerald and Sheila summoning the rings. So we've got the phone call right at the end of the... Um, oh, no, sorry, I missed one. Why Eric's revelation comes last. So uh, that's priestly implying that Eric's exploitation is worse than um, the, the others and um, the logical consequence of patriarchal society, and the fact also that he's committed real crimes. So that's basically pointing the finger at Eric. We don't have to agree with that. We can think that somebody else is more to blame. A lot of members in the English department think that um, Gerald is actually worse than um, Eric. Um, but again, that's open to interpretation. And um, yes, <laughs> I don't need to ramble too much about that. Um uh, yes, Gerald and Sheila summoning the ring, so the phone call. Uh, ring obviously has a double meaning, and um, we've got Sheila half deciding that she will take the ring. She doesn't say it outright, but she's leaving that option open, and that's why the second phone call needs to happen, because if she takes the ring, she's going to go back to Gerald, and Gerald represents everything the inspector is against, and so she will be rejecting the inspector through that act. And so even Sheila, who seemed most um, susceptible, most... Um, likely to be this voice for change and hope for the future if she still hasn't fully learned then you know they have to all go through it again you respect can't take any chances and um lastly again i've talked about this in the context video why it's set in 1912 instead of 1937 just before world war ii because Priestley wanted to talk about both wars and um uh, eva's two deaths i say you know sort of in inverted commas um, it's symbolic of the two wars. Um, oh, I've muddled it up again, but yes, why it's set in 1912, sorry, why the second death happens, symbolic of World War II, and why it's set um, in 1912, because Priestley wants to talk about the whole of the first half of the um, 20th century, and he wants to talk about both wars, remind the audience of both wars, and saying we can't forget, we need to change. Um, but yes, a lot of these we've already talked about in greater detail in the um, analytical videos, but I've taught myself quite hoarse um, at the moment. So, again, thank you awfully for watching. I hope it's been useful, and I will not ramble on anymore. I'll leave it there. I'm sure I'll pick up some other videos on Inspector Calls, some key quotes, maybe, um, thesis statements, um, model essays, um, how to plan an essay, that sort of thing. But for the time being, um, at least I've covered this. So, thank you for watching, and have a lovely evening. I know I'm speaking in the present, but yes, I hope you're doing well. There we are.